Welcome, everyone, to the Unfound Podcast channel once again. I am Unfound's host, Ed Denzel, and as the title suggests, I'm going to be doing a map analysis for the disappearance of Daniel Villarreal. Before I get started, please consider subscribing to this channel, like this video, and if you're really motivated, hit that little join button below this video and become a member of this channel. I think it's important to do a, a map analysis for this disappearance because I did not realize, uh, well, I'm going to get in, into it here in a bit, but I think in the interview that I did with Daniel's mother, Connie, get the idea that these two crash locations, and then where the driver, maybe Daniel, maybe not, ran off are all kind of close to each other. That is certainly not the situation, and that could affect your interpretation of this disappearance uh, in a couple different ways. So let's just get right into this. If you remember, uh, and I have gotten this not just from what Connie has said, but I actually looked at the police report, and unfortunately, due to the names and other items that are in the police reports, both of them from Surprise and Glendale, uh, I, I just don't think that they can, can be made public uh, at this time. Maybe Connie will want to do that, but I kind of... Um, said that I, I was not going to post them on Unfound's website. But these, uh, what I'm going to describe here comes directly from the police reports. So we get over here. Here is West Union Hills Drive, right here, just almost in the middle of your screen. And as the report says, somebody and, and Jessica were in Daniel's car and they were going east. East is going to the right. This is north. This is south, west, and east. They were headed east. And a wreck happened right there at Union Hills. And this, these yellow lines right here, this is the 101 running north and south. And I think in, a, in maybe even in a couple descriptions, this is even maybe described as the intersection of West Union Hills and like 80th Street or 81st Street, some something like that, because this is 79th, this is 81st right here. So I guess you could say this is like 80th Street, even though it's one, the 101. The first wreck happened right there. Going this direction, the car runs into the back of someone else, and the driver, Daniel or someone else, <clears throat> keeps going, you know, flees the scene. Jessica and this person in the car. They get down here to 73rd Street, which is right there, and <clears throat> another wreck happens. And it, it's at that point that the driver, whether you believe it was Daniel or someone else, jumped out of the car and headed south. If you'll remember from the interview also, the Connie sa stated that this person, uh, a witness... I don't think it was the person who was run into, but somebody else, a witness, followed the driver south somehow. I don't think it was on foot. I think somebody else was in a car. And this driver headed directly south on 73rd Street. What Connie uh, said next is that then what she had been told is that the driver jumped into the canal. Well, what is unclear, it's very vague, is how far is that canal from the wreck site? You get the idea, at least before I looked at this map, you get the idea that, you know, it's right there. Well, it's not. You will see that the canal, and I will even have to zoom out to show you this here on Google Maps. And the... 73rd Street is right where the DR is in West Union, Union Hills Drive right there. That is where uh, 73rd Street is running north and south. Well, the canal is way down here at the bottom of the screen. There it is. And I actually measured it out. 
uh, although that measurement is not on the screen, that is 1.08 miles. So like a mile and a tenth from right here where the wreck happened the whole way down to where this canal is. And this canal kind of goes in a diagonal direction this way. And we also have to remember along the way that the driver dumped that backpack off here somewhere and into a trash can. And given that these are all houses and everything, I'm thinking maybe that the trash can had to have been closer to um, the canal than it was to the wreck. That's just a guess. I just don't see a, a trash can, unless it was somebody's trash can, he just randomly uh, ran by and dumped it somebody's trash can that happened to be out on the street somewhere. But somewhere between the wreck and the canal, this backpack was dumped. We know that the backpack was eventually found. So the driver ran a mile or walked a mile. Some maybe jogged a mile. Maybe let's just uh, split the difference there. That would mean to me, if, it was, if, if you don't know, uh, the average human walks about three and a half miles per hour. So to walk a mile at a regular pace, you know, it's going to take around, you know, somewhere to between 15 and 20 minutes. But this person, of course, would be a little hurried to get away from the wreck, obviously fleeing a scene, jogging. Let's just say this would have maybe taken 12 minutes. And what's interesting to me, of course, the cops didn't show up in time to call uh, to, to catch this person. I'm not sure if the person who was following was also on 911 saying, hey, I'm following this guy who is fleeing the scene of a hit and run. Uh, I'm not sure if anybody really knows that. We know that 911 was called, but I don't know if it was called by the person who was actually following the driver. What I'm saying is there was plenty of time for the driver to be caught here, but he wasn't. In addition, the question I have is, did the driver even know that this canal was down here? Obviously, if you live in the area, you know that these canals, and I knew in Las Vegas, they have these, these um, man-made rivers that run through Las Vegas to divert water, because back in the day, Las Vegas used to get flooded every time it would rain, and then they put in this water system to stop that from happening. Phoenix is the same way. And so a lot of this is, this is all, even though there's grass and dirt and everything in it, it's actually man-made. So they obviously know that these can canals are all around the area, but would that driver have known that this canal, at the time, would that person have been able to put that all together? Not sure. And thinking, well, I can run down to this canal. It's that far away. I'll jump over the, uh, you know, the wall into the canal and, and I'll get away. I also have to think of it this way. Is that really the best choice? Because once you jump into this canal, you're kind of locked in. It's easier to probably to jump into the canal than it is to get out, although I'm sure there are ways to get out of it. Um, you would think if you're trying to flee a, a hit and run that it's better to stay amongst the buildings and in the trees and having a lot of different directions you can go. You get into the canal, there's only you either go upstream or downstream or however go, however which way the, the water would go, although these, these canals are usually dry. So it doesn't seem like the best choice, but that is the choice that this person made. And maybe you should figure that into your calculations as well as trying to figure out if that was Daniel or not. So once again, to go through this, this is the first wreck where it happened. Second wreck happened. The driver got out, walked, jogged, or ran down this way, got into this canal, and that's the last time the driver was seen. Of course, if it was not Daniel, then I guess we're to presume that that person made it back somewhere. And, and you should know that Connie has some ideas who might that might person might have been. On the other hand, if you believe it was Daniel who did this and went into the canal, then what happened to him? So that is my map analysis, a little explanation, a little insight into these different locations and the direction that the driver went. Please uh, consider uh, giving this video a thumbs up. If you are not yet a subscriber to this channel, please do so. 
and I will talk to you again soon. Thanks.